My video offering some criticisms of Attack on Titan's second season had a bit of a mixed reception, so I figured I'd extend a bit of an olive branch to those many, many people who disliked that video. I'm kinder to the series in this one, but also, Amino Apps reached out to me to shout out their Attack on Titan Amino app, which I think will be a great place for you rabid fans of the series. The front page features cosplay and also individual fan art posts, you can head over to the public chats for roleplay threads, and there's also quizzes, polls, and more. We may not have started our relationship on the best of footing, but you can download the app and follow me, username Pedantic Romantic, on there, with the information at the top of this video's description. If you're someone who's passionate enough about Attack on Titan that my previous work on it upset you a bit, then this is definitely a community you'll be right at home in. This video is indeed sponsored by Attack on Titan Amino, just closing that here, and come on folks, Electrolysis won't pay for itself. Among my high school's anime fandom, Attack on Titan shipping was huge. Now, to be fair, the substantial majority of those visible enough in their liking of anime to be noticeable as the anime fans of the school were female, and thus things like Hitalia and Homestuck received similar treatment. But whereas something like Hitalia really leans into that shipping with a Moe-style cutesiness to its relationships, and a lot of bits of suggestiveness, Attack on Titan has an entirely different vibe. There's a combination of factors leading to an undercurrent of sexuality that runs throughout this series, which I believe starts with the character designs themselves. The manga's character arc can be extremely janky, but there is also a harshness and intensity to it that can at times be alluring, a lot of which stems from Isayama's rough line work, that's really able to blossom under the pen of character designer Kyoji Asano, who adapted those designs for the anime. The other place you're likely to have seen his work is on Psychopaths, whose characters he also designed, and you can definitely see the similarities. But his first and only other job as character designer was for an OVA Psychopaths studio production IG put out in 2007, Tokyo Marble Chocolate. Consistent across the designs for these three anime is a slightly sharper, more mature look, hence why Asano was a great choice for the person to adapt Attack on Titans, with heads that are less round than a typical anime's and instead a bit more tall and narrow being a significant factor in that appearance of maturity. His designs as a whole also tend to be a bit taller, and even more notably, rather lanky, with longer, more slender limbs, though that facet of his style is least prominent in Attack on Titan, where there were pre-existing designs that had to be followed somewhat. Now, in Tokyo Marble Chocolate, the designs do have a level of softer shoujo stylings to them, since they're paired with beautiful hand-drawn backgrounds courtesy of Shichiro Kobayashi that serve to give the whole OVA a bit of a storybook feel. But it is also a story about an adult romantic relationship and the specific challenges the adult dating world can bring, and these designs do a great job of helping to ground the more fantastical elements into a real-world context. Moving from an adult romance to psychopaths, a palpable sense of sexuality to the characters was once again necessary. It rarely gets too explicit, until the movie at least, but that's exactly the point, the casual nature of sex and sexuality, typified by scenes like Akane walking in on what is heavily implied to have just been a sexual encounter between Shion and Yayoi that elicits a questioning look, but no outright questions. This isn't the cartoonish sexuality of many anime that are better served by soft, almost childish features and exaggerated curves. If it was, Akane would have walked in a minute earlier, and instead of being a moment of neat character development and world building, it'd be played up for a cheap gag. It's just a subtle sense that these are mature people who may very well have been casually enjoying each other's company five minutes before you walked in. At one point, Shion wonders how she and Kogami haven't hooked up yet, because such a thing happening wouldn't at all be incongruous with these characters in this setting. The particulars of the setting and tone of Attack on Titan end up really playing into those innate qualities of Asano's designs. This is a brutal, intense, violent world, and with these primitive carnal elements often comes sex as well. Specifically, eating, violence, and sex are often grouped together as a trio representing base human quality, and those former two certainly feature very prominently throughout Attack on Titan. Levi and his intense, piercing gaze seems to be a fan favorite among those who swing that way, and it totally makes sense. One look at him is all you need, and you can tell that this guy fucks. I'm just gonna say it. This guy fucks. Am I right? And, to put my bit of indulgent humor aside, it really just seems like he'd definitely be getting some. This is an individual with an extreme personality, who executes on those resulting desires, in his case the desire to murder as many titans as possible, with laser-like precision. If he's got sexual desires as well, and as we've gone over, the designs do a good job of suggesting that to be the case, then there is every reason to believe that he'd act upon them with similar efficiency, and he certainly wouldn't have any trouble finding someone to do so with. The common shipping partner for him is Eric. <coughs> <clears throat> Hanji, I said Hanji, because they seem to interact fairly often and know each other pretty well. 
She is perhaps even more wild in her unfettered and instant reckless pursuit of whatever whim happens to come over her, so why wouldn't these two beautiful people be boning down in their off time? Lots of characters have this impulsiveness to them. Bringing up eating again, Sasha is all too enthusiastic to indulge that desire at every possible opportunity. With death being a constant looming threat, there's an even greater sense that these characters have every reason to get in on some of that sweet, sweet lovemaking. As cliched a Dojin plot as it is, I may die tomorrow, let's not leave with any regrets, Aaron, makes sense as a distinct possibility. Add to that the fact that a number of characters seem to be almost defined by their intense investment in one specific person, and with season 2's finale, the explicit establishment of that investment as one with a romantic element to it, and the series is doing a lot of this shipping for us. The key here is that, unlike many other series, everything surrounding these relationships really moves that shipping away from the realm of immature, goofy indulgence, and into one of gritty adult reality. I will say that Attack on Titan is held back a bit by failing to actually capitalize on all of this, and make it a true part of its world outside of fan headcanons, though. I was chatting with my friend Second Look about this, and he said that he felt frustrated by the fact that we don't get any of those little scenes acknowledging the present sexuality the same way we do in Psycho Pass, that it feels like it would happen, and that the fact we don't actually see any of this was even somewhat immersion-breaking for him. I understand that it is technically a shonen, and so perhaps expecting the level of maturity on that topic that Psychopaths provided is expecting too much. But while the shonen magazine it runs in has had instances of that soft, rounded sexuality in the form of things like the weirdly raunchy Shin Sekai manga, it also had Akuna Hana and its brutal take on teenage sexual perversion, so there really isn't much of an excuse for Attack on Titan, I feel. Shocking violence, and especially in recent years as series like Game of Thrones have become incredibly popular, character death have become markers of a mature series for many. But in my eyes, a deft and nuanced handling of sex is actually much more indicative of a show's true level of maturity, and can often take a greater degree of skill to pull off well. Stick around for an upcoming video from me going over how one light novel series of all things from this season managed to do just that. Attack on Titan definitely serves as an interesting environment to observe Kyoji Asano's style at work, and I'm really looking forward to seeing more series featuring it in the future. When utilized well, they have a lot to offer that not many other designs do. 